if you're making a software for an interval based service then the last thing that you want probably is two clients booking the same service for the same interval so today we are going to cover the logic which we use to avoid this okay and this is not going to be a, a language specific or some domain specific thing it's going to cover just the logic pure logic okay so let's get right into it Now this video stems from a series that I'm doing on this channel that is the hotel management system app series in which this concept comes into play when a person books a hotel and uh, we don't want the two people to book the hotel for the hot the same hotel room for the same interval of time okay so this is the logic that we use to check the availability of a room now the main thing that we want to I mean state here is that you're using a library okay a library that allows you to compare dates and times now in in my project i'm using python's date time library but whatever your language be whatever your um, framework be you should have a library for it which allows you to compare dates and times like in python's date time library one jan like one jan is less than two jan or uh, you can say 9 pm is less than 10 pm so this is how the date time library works and you can compare dates and times in this manner or a com combination of dates and times like 1 january 9 pm is less than 2 january 10 pm because the more in the future you go the greater the value goes okay this is how you compare in them now if you can compare dates and times we have a major problem solved Now the next thing that we want to see here is timelines. Now since you have one resource or one asset like you're, uh, you're lending out a event hall or you're lending out booking, uh, I mean hotel rooms or you are giving your personal services as a freelancer to a client for a specific amount of time, any of those examples you have just one timeline, remember. Now what you don't want is that, suppose this is the timeline, okay? Now suppose these are the bookings that you have already made. This is your timeline, this black line, this black box and uh, these red boxes are the bookings that you have made. Okay? So suppose this is your, um, this is where your day begins that is uh, suppose 10 a.m. and this is your day finishes 6 um, 6 a.m. something like that if you are selling some services or uh, this can be just 24 hour day if you are booking a hotel or something then you can just limit the timeline but the core concept is that you have a timeline now you have bookings in it now you want to check if the incoming booking that you want to make can fit in here or in here or in somewhere here and it should not overlap over here or here or somewhere around these red boxes. Now that's the logic. Now to make sure that these new bookings that come in don't overlap with these red bookings, what do we do? Now one thing that we need to make sure or understand is that every booking has a beginning time and an ending time. That is if you take a hotel room example then it has a check-in and a checkout. Now this is your check-in, this is your checkout. Now for the next booking, this is your check-in, this is your checkout. Now some, similarly, this is the check-in, checkout. And now even here, you have a check-in and checkout. Now this is important. Every interval has a starting time and an ending time. Now what you want to make sure um, is that the two intervals don't overlap. Now, because if they overlap, then two people are going to book the same hotel room for the same interval. And that's, that's the thing that we want to avoid, right? That's our objective. Now, to do that, we have our check-ins and check-outs in place. Now, the incoming booking has a check-in and check-out. Now, now, I've thought over it for a long time. And the only one thing that you need to keep in mind is this check-in that you put in here 
should be after the checkout of any of these bookings. Suppose you have just one booking, okay? Now you want to make sure that this incoming booking, this booking has come over here. This incoming booking does not overlap. Then what you want to make sure that the person who checks in, checks in after the first person checks out, right? So compare the person, uh, compare the existing booking with the incoming booking in this manner. So the existing booking has a checkout. Now, um, for existing check-in and check-out, I'll declare some variables like um, I'll say x check-in and uh, x check-out and in a similar manner, we have um, for the incoming ones, I'll write it in blue. It will make much more sense. For the incoming ones, we have check in and check out. Now, what you need to make sure here over here is that for the existing booking, existing checkout is less than the incoming check in. So when you take these two, you want to make sure that the existing checkout is less than the incoming check in. So the booking fits in here. Or, or, or if a booking exists over here, then it has a check in over here, check out over here. And our new booking has check in over here, check out over here. Now what you can make sure here is, or check here is, that the existing bookings check in, check in is after the new bookings check out. So it's after, it means that the existing bookings check in is greater than the exist, uh, new bookings check out. New booking is the blue one, right? So when we check the existing check in and the new check out, the existing check in should be greater than the new checkout and if I do a similar thing with this the existing checkout should be less than the new check-in now these are the only two conditions that you need to keep in mind while you check for the availability of a time slot a time slot that uh, exists in a single timeline so that you don't want it to overlap. Definitely that exists in a single timeline because if, if you add more rooms, then you don't mind if two people book the two different rooms for the same time, right? That's even better for business, right? But if you have just one room, suppose we are taking just on a one room, one room or on one event or a one freelancer basis or anything that has one timeline, then this logic can be applied to it that the existing check-in is greater than the new checkout so that uh, the new thing fits in here respect with respect to this thing or the existing checkout that is this is a uh, see this existing checkout is less than the new check-in and uh, existing check-in is greater than the new checkout so this makes sure that any incoming uh, booking or an interval which you want to book for some client fits in a place now the thing that you will i mean think about if you think about this logic for a while is what about cross like if the existing checkout is less than the um, new checkout does it matter well it does not matter only if you make sure that any booking that you make the checkout is greater than the check-in because it does not make sense if you have a checkout in the past like a person is going to check in in the future and check out in the past that's going to be possible only in time travel movies or something so that's not going to make sense at all so if you make sure that a person checks out after the person checks in that is in the right chron chronological order 
where time flows in just one direction, then this won't be a problem at all. Because if time flows in one direction and you make sure that in this condition, the existing checkout is less than the new check-in, then the new checkout is also going to be, I mean, the exist, uh, existing checkout is also going to be less than the new checkout, right? Because the new checkout is less, uh, greater than the, ex uh, the new check-in, right? So a person, um, time flows in this direction, a person comes in here, goes out here, comes in here, goes out here, comes in here, goes out here. So the only two conditions that you have to check for is existing check-in should be greater than checkout, the new checkout and existing checkout should be less than the new check-in. Now, these should be in a OR because you, you cannot, uh, if you think about it for a while, then you cannot implement this with AND, like you don't even need to. If the existing check-in, that is this, is greater than the new checkout, then it fits, right? And if you're checking, and remember one thing, this is important, you're not checking with uh, with respect to these three bookings or something. You're just checking two bookings. So when you're taking these two or these two, then just take those two. Like if you're taking these two, ignore this one. It does not matter. Now, if you're checking these two, then it means that this is the check-in and check-out over here, this blue, and this is the check-in and check-out over here in the black. Then you're checking that the existing check-in over here is greater than the checkout, which means this condition is satisfied. And now I say or over here because when you implement the logic, you're going to say or not and because this or means that now if you satisfy this condition right here, okay, we are ignoring this, these two, we are taking these two, okay. Now with respect to these two, if you satisfy this condition that the existing check in the first condition that the existing check-in is greater than the new checkout. So this condition is satisfied, this one. Then can you satisfy this condition, the second one? Actually, you cannot. If you, if you see this carefully, the existing checkout, that is this, is less than the check-in, the new check-in. Now the new check-in is here and existing checkout is here. So does it satisfy? Well, you can see for yourself, it does not. In a similar manner, if you take these two, then you see that the second condition satisfies, right? The existing checkout is less than the new check-in since it's on the left, right? So the existing checkout is less than the new check-in. Now this condition satisfies. Now ignore this one, okay? Now existing, now this condition is satisfied. Now let's check for this one. Now the existing check-in is greater than the new checkout. Now, is the existing check-in greater than the new checkout? No, actually it's not. It's very clear because this is on the right side in the timeline, right? Because anything in the future is greater than anything in the past. That's what we started the video with, right? So, if this condition satisfies, this does not. And if this condition satisfies, this does not. But if any of the two conditions satisfy, then the time slot is available. So what you have to check for is if this condition or this condition is true. If it is true, then your time slot is available. And this is how you handle the logic. You get it? I hope you get uh, you learned something new and uh, this made your life a bit easier. But anyways, you'll have to think about the logic for a while. And if you liked my video, do hit the like button because it will help the channel a lot. And if you want to see more of such videos, then do subscribe and hit the bell button. So you'll be notified. Bye-bye.